Let's go ahead and get into it right now. Intel Arc Alchemist A770 graphics card spotted in Geek Bench and Puget Bench benchmarks coming from WCCF Tech. As always, the Intel Arc A770 graphics card was recently tested through the Puget Bench DaVinci Resolve benchmarking software. During the output release on the internet, the graphics driver used for the test was unknown. It says now 30.0.101.1.1723. When there is a separate branch created for an overarching, overarching driver, it will at times signify that there is unreleased hardware being used, raising questions as to the mysterious parts in question. The newest Intel driver appears after the drivers for the Intel Arc 1330 and iGPU 1660 variants, the numbers replacing the 1723 in the version. The new driver may be pre-planned to support the latest desktop Arc graphics cards, however, this is currently under speculation as Intel has not commented on the recent string. The last driver was published on April 8th, and that was close to 1.5 weeks after the launch of the new Arc GPU laptop series. The driver delivered fixes for the first initial period after launch. However, the list of current issues remains to be quite lengthy. Arc-based GPUs shipped with the Intel Arc control software currently use their versions. Intel has yet to confirm if the company plans to merge any of the multiple drivers into one single driver. As you can see here, we have a screenshot from the Puget Bench DaVinci Resolve uh, .93.0, which is using DaVinci Resolve Studio 17.4.6. Overall score 500, 4K, 17, GPU effect score 45, and the Fusion score 88. You can see here that you have it running on a 9600K CPU. And then it is the A770 graphics card is what it says here. And then it has 16 gigabytes of system memory. And then I think it's, where is it? Well, yeah, it just says the video card in that driver version there. The Puget DaVinci test examines the rendering of graphics with an expansive scope of codecs at 4K and 8K resolutions only for extended presets, OpenFX, and other quality performance in Fusion. It is not a benchmark test to measure performance or quality. In the leaked information and in engineering board, typically used for Intel employee testing purposes, the Coffee Lake S UDIM RVP was utilized, as well as the in Intel Core i5 9600K CPU, which is also used in internal testing by the company. They typed internal three times. Come on, WCCF Tech. I already have a hard time reading. In addition to the Puget benchmark, the Arc Alchemist A770 has reappeared within the Geekbench benchmark now with a 3% performance boost compared to the previous entry. While this is an improvement, it's still far a far cry from the competing options of the 6700 XT and the RTX 3070. As you can see here, it got a score of 88,235, beating out the 2070, but still behind the 6700 XT and the 2080. Uh, and the 3070, which is way up here. Intel's newest Arc A770 is an ACM G10 based graphics card for desktops. The graphics card will launch with 8 gigabytes and 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. It is also anticipated to compete with the RTX 3060 and 3070 series cards uh, of cards in terms of performance. However, as we have reported before, Intel has been relatively silent about performance data before the release. So we'll need to wait a little longer before seeing accurate data from the tech manufacturer. What do you guys think about this? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I'm wondering if Intel's strategy is because it's, it's frankly going to be a release behind Ada Lovelace and of course uh, the RX 7000 series from AMD almost releasing very close to those launch dates. It feels like we're going to be talking about those launch dates here in just a second. But if that's kind of the plan, are they going to lean into crypto mining like GPU crypto mining? Is that a potential possibility for them to really garner some revenue? I would if I was them because you need something to go ahead and boost it. If we're going to be completely honest about Radeon specifically catching up 
to NVIDIA over the past four years. A huge proponent, a huge cause to that was the first crypto boom. And that was the 2016 to 2018 range. That crypto boom basically helped Radeon get enough funding, of course, along with Ryzen taking off too. But if we're being completely honest, that helped Radeon from the, all their Polaris GPUs being extremely popular for crypto mining to the 5000 series to even the 6000 series. But primarily that Polaris boom really helped AMD and Radeon catch up on the graphics side. It's not a bad strategy. Of course, it would be pretty slow growing because we know that GPU binding is waning and the interest in it is. But if they could get competitive memory performance and memory intensive algorithm performance, I think that that would be the best bet. That's the strategy as Intel if I'm trying to launch a GPU that I would be utilizing to get some extra sales out of it. But that's just my two cents on it. Uh, I could be completely wrong. However, as we have reported before, Intel has been relatively silent about the performance, of course, is what it says here. Intel Arc A770, 256-bit memory bus, 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. That is pretty awesome from a memory performance standard. Also, if you're talking about that versus the 3070 Ti or the 6700 XT, it has more memory, double that of a 3070 Ti, which means that potentially you have more options for basically mining algorithms that have growing DAGs will last longer, that sort of thing. It's interesting to see basically 16 gigabytes at that level of GPU performance, which is essentially going to be at this point, guaranteed 2070 performance, but potentially even more. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.